This is Mikey Borup for PremiumBeat.com, and in this After Effects course, you will learn the basics to advanced features of After Effects. Interface, shape layers, motion tracking, compositing, and more. During these tutorials, feel free to pause, rewind, and ask questions. I will be using After Effects CC version 12.2, but most of the techniques learned can be used in older versions. In this video, we will cover particles, painting, and puppet tool. So let's fire up After Effects and get started. So here I am in After Effects and I've got a brand new composition already. Let's change it a new name. Let's call it the three P's because that's what I'm going to be talking about. And when I mean the three P's is there's three, I wouldn't really call them effects because they're not like your normal typical effects, but they're more um, bigger features of After Effects and they all start with three. And that is particles, painting, and the puppet tool. So let's start with particles, show you how the particle systems work and kind of what you can do with it, and then we'll move on from there. So the particle system is technically in effect because you have to apply it to a layer. So let's go add a new solid layer. And let's go to effect, simulation. And there's a couple of them here. There's particle systems too. There's particle world, there's particle playground. For general things, I like to use particle systems too. So let's click on that. And what it is, is there's an emitter in the middle and it's just spitting out particles everywhere. And this is your default look is like this. But let's go in and let's do some keyframing. So if I come into the effects to particle systems too, into the producer and then keyframe the position, I can move this around and you can kind of see how particles work. And let's play through that. And you can see how they are always going to be moving out of that producer, wherever that is. Let's go up and reset this. So what can you do with particles? So let's go through the particle systems too. Let's look at the different options. So first is the birth rate, and that's how many particles are going to be coming out every frame. So if I bring this up to you know 26, see how it's a lot thicker than if I bring this down to 0.2, then there's just a little bit of particles coming out. So that's the birth rate. And we again, all of these things are key frameable. So for instance, I can come up here, have this set at 100 on this first frame, and then I'm going to move forward one frame. That's page down on the keyboard to move forward one frame. And I'm going to set that to zero. And this is going to look like an explosion. I'm going to move forward actually two frames. And you can see how that looks like an explosion. Now with that explosion, let's maybe do some more tweaking. I can change the longevity. So let's change this to 0.5. And what's going to happen is they're going to disappear sooner. Let's, let's change this to 0 0.1, 0 0.2. See how that works? Let's go back to 0.5. Okay, next there's the producer. The producer is the position. So I can have this in different spots. I can have different size. So let's just bring this down to one point so it's all coming from a single point. So that's the producer. Next is the physics. So if we go into the physics tab, there's some preset animations here, but let's just kind of go through. Velocity is how fast they're going to be moving away. So if I increase the velocity, it's going to explode really fast. Let's bring that velocity down. There's also the gravity. So are they going to fall? If I do a negative gravity, they're going to fall up. Or if I have zero gravity, it's going to be, everything's going to move out in the same direction without it falling down. So if I have lots of gravity, you can see everything is kind of falling down. So that's the gravity. So this is kind of looking like a cool uh, firework going on. And there's resistance. So 
say it's going through some thick air or, you know, simulate underwater kind of thing, it's going to be resistance to go through. You can change the direction of things. So that's in the physics. Now let's go a little bit more. Let's go down to the particle itself. And right now it's set as a line, but I can switch this to a star. Or a faded, I mean, I mean a shaded sphere, a faded sphere, a bubble. So there's different particle types. Triangles. I can come in and change how si the size of the particle when they're born versus how big they are when they die. Let's go back to lines. Okay. I can also change the color. So say I want this to start bright red and then dye white. So they're going to start red and they're going to fade to white however long they live, which is up here a half a second. I can also have them fade out. So they can have a constant. So they're not going to be fading at all. They just are they're here and then they're gone. Or we can have a fade in and out. So they kind of fade in and fade out or just a fade out. We also have like oscillate. And you can see they kind of twinkle that way. Let's increase this longevity. Let's go to one second on that. So now that we kind of have a little tour of this, let's create something you know useful with this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to reset everything. And let's go into the producer. And let's move it up. And let's make it really wide. Let's take the velocity down to zero. So it's kind of just raining down. Have a lot less gravity. We want these things to be going slower. Bring the resistance up. Longevity. Let's take the birth rate way down. And we've got kind of an interesting look here. Now let's change the particle type to like a, let's do a faded and shaded sphere have the size a lot bigger. And as you see, it always starts at the beginning of the layer. So if I want this to be on all the time, I need to move my playhead over to where it's on and let's just drag this this way and then extend it out. And so what I have here now is I've got kind of this look and it might be a good background. So let's Maybe take the gravity down even a little bit more. Let's bring the birth size up even bigger. Let's change the colors. Let's go to transfer mode and add, have it set to add. And we're creating kind of a cool looking background out of this. So what we can do now is let's add another solid have this white, put down below. Let's come into this effect and let's give it a quick blur. Let's repeat the pixel edges and then let's add in our text on top of this. Let me write something cool. And let's render this out. So there's kind of a cool background we got going on here. And as I look at this, I notice I can see kind of the particles popping up up on the top there. So I can, I can even come in and scale this up a little bit. And then I won't see that. And I've got kind of this, kind of this flowing background. So that's one thing you can do with it. And there's tons and tons and tons of things. So this is definitely one that you want to jump in and really kind of explore and see all the different options with the particle world. So let's close this all down. Okay, so we're starting with just a white solid. Now the next one I want to show you is painting. 
So right up here, there's the paintbrush. If I click on that, and I can't paint in the normal view. See, it brings up a warning. So I need to double click on this, and then in this layer um, kind of window, I can paint here. So let's bring the playhead to the beginning. So I'm going to paint a circle, but I don't want to do that yet because right there, it's going to paint white. And I don't want to paint white on white. So this is my, you know, I can change the color. Up here, it says brushes. I can change the size of my brush. So let's 13. I can even make that even bigger. So I can paint. And then what happens is when I come back over here to the composition, let's go down onto my layer into my effects, there's now a paint effect. And you can see this brush and I've got stroke options. So I can, after I paint, I can come in here, I can change the color. I can change the diameter. I can even change the hardness, the roundness, different things like that, and the spacing. So how the paint works is it's actually creating lots of dots and you just have them spaced really close together so it looks like a single line. Now the fun part is I can I can actually animate this painting on with this start and end. So if I keyframe the end, move forward, go to the end and then we can animate this painting on. Pretty cool. So what can this paint brush be used for? Well, let's, let's create a scenario here. Let's bring in some text. Let's make sure we can see it. Hi. When anyone is at a loss for words of what to write down, for some reason it's always the word hi. I don't know why. So now let's go in and let's paint this. So let's paint the letter, or let's paint the text. So I'm going to get my paintbrush tool. And in order to paint this, we actually need to pre-compose this. So I'm going to come in, Command Shift C, it'll pre-compose my text. I want to want to move all the attributes over. Yep. Now let's come in, grab my paint. And let's get this so we can paint. So what I'm going to do is let's bring my diameter up as large as it'll go. And I'm going to paint just like this. And that's it. Now let's go back over to the footage. Let's go to the effects, paint, and you can see there's four brush strokes because I did one, two, three, four. So I can come in, let's come to the stroke options. We want to start with brush one, and then we want to go brush two. I'm keyframing these. Brush three. Brush four. Okay. Now what we can do, so let's close all this down. I'm going to go into this composition. Let's take this text. I'm going to copy it, or actually I'm going to cut it. Let's put it in here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to change my toggle switches and modes. I'm going to go to alpha mat. And so what's going to happen is it's going to write on. And it's going to use the same text. Now if I want to come in here and kind of fix right there, so what I would do is I'd come into the effects and this brush, which would be brush one. I can transform the brush and I can move the position over. Right there, let's go to brush two, or actually, yeah, brush two. Transform the brush, move its position. Okay, and that's how you do kind of a write on this way. There's lots of ways of doing write on, but that's one way that you can do it is with the paintbrush. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is the puppet tool. The puppet tool is pretty darn cool, it's a way of creating very organic looking movements. So let's just use the same high composition. Let's actually pre-comp that again. And the puppet tool is right here. It's this pin. It's called the puppet pin tool. 
So if I click on that and I put little pins, different spots on my composition, Now, after I do that, take a look what I can do. I can just take this one and grab it and move it all around. And it's a great way of doing animations, uh, creating little characters that walk and move. And it's a very kind of organic movement because everything is, you can see how it's just kind of flowing and bending. Let's take a look at what we did. So right there, that's cool. Now, some things we can do with this. Let's let's do something fun. So let's have some text in here. Let's call it fast. And I'm going to pre-compose this because if you don't pre-compose your text, then the puppet tool will only work on one. Right? It's not going to work on everything, and I want it to work on all of them together. Now. I'm going to do something with this word fast. And what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this white solid, and then I'm going to take the second white solid and the word fast, and I'm going to pre-compose them all together. So I want After Effects to see this as one solid piece of footage. Because if there's any sort of transparency, After Effects will treat the puppet tool with it differently. So I'm going to grab this, I'm going to pin twice, and then pin one up at the top. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard, and I'm going to take this pre-composition, keyframe the position, go back five frames, grab my selection arrow, and then move it here. Let's move, turn this white back on. And then what I want to do is after it hits here, let's grab my puppet tool again. And every time you add a puppet tool, it's going to add an effect here. And see, I've got these meshes, and it's this. And when I select the different puppet pins, you can see they're highlighting. And so I've got puppet pin three highlighted, and it's the one up here. So right here, as it hits, right where it hits there, I'm going to move forward two frames, back two frames, forward two frames back two frames. And then I'm going to come in, copy this original pin, and then paste it to make sure it's in the exact same spot. As this comes in, you can see it's got kind of a, a fast, jiggly look to it. And it's not just moving back and forth. The whole text is actually moving. So let's come in, turn on motion blur, which is this right here. Turn on motion blur right there. And let's take a look at this rendered out. Pretty cool. So the puppet pin tool, really great way of adding a little bit of character, a little bit of um, something different to your animations. And the little things are what really counts. It, having the using the puppet tool to do that makes such a big difference on the, the way this ended up looking than if I would have just not done it and maybe just moved it back and forth in position. So that's the puppet tool, that's the painting brush, and that's particles. So three great effects or features of After Effects. They all begin with the letter P. It's the three Ps. So go check them out. Dive into After Effects. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them below. Thank you for watching and participating in this course. Feel free to comment and share this video with others. In our next video, we'll be talking about advanced expressions and rigging, controllers, and presets. Again, this is Mikey Bort for PremiumBeat.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.